And I want to acknowledge those who talked about the intergenerational change that we're doing within our own family and how big that is. Uh, because as we live our lives now, and so I'm a, I, I'm a nanny, I'm a queer. Uh, I have five mokopuna, six tamariki, five mokopuna. And in the lives of, I come from a family of 10. Uh, so there's 12 in our whānau, 10 siblings. And um, our, in our life, we had a very different life to the life that my children have experienced. And it was a very conscious decision to make an intergenerational change in our lives that has now become an intergenerational change in the lives of our mokopuna. That is the power of whānau. That is the power of whether we call it kaupapa Māori, whether we call it āhuatanga Māori, whether we call it mātauranga Māori, mātauranga iwi hapu. That is the power of when we take control of our own transformation and when we are resourced and supported to take control of our own transformation. So in the next couple of days, there is going to be a significant amount of challenge to systems and to structures and to institutions. And I think it's really important that we say up front in this kaupapa, in this, in this particular wānanga, that we know the impact of colonisation. We know the impact of imposed structures. We know that it is intergenerational. We know that the removal of a child is an intergenerational impact. And we know that all of us in this room are committed to stopping that. So no matter what institution we work in, that will never go above who we are as Fano, hapu and iwi. So we have a space where we can work together uh, as, as Fano members, as hapu members, as iwi members here over the next two days to think about some ways that we can make some significant change, whether that be inside or externally. For those of you who are aware of our work, the work that we do uh, and at Te Potahi and the Mahi um, that we lead, in this space we really are about talking about kaupapa Māori and in some institutions particularly we're talking about a need to dismantle, a need to dismantle oppressive institutions and sometimes that means we start our own and sometimes that means we have to start from scratch with something new. We've got an opportunity I think with people in this room, with all of us in this room to think about what might that new thing, those new things look like. And I'm really hoping they don't look like another ministry. Because we don't need any more ministries. But we do need to think carefully about how we want to do the intergenerational change uh, that we want to do for our own Fano and to support other Fano in those kinds of changes. Uh, so that's really what this project is about, Te Taungo Taku Ngāko. The first time that I was, uh, you know, able to utilise that particular whakatauki uh, in Mahi was when in the, during the time of the anti-smacking bill, uh, a group of us made a documentary for Māori television called Te Taungo Taku Ngāko. And it was entirely focused on putting out some whakaro Māori around the fact that we did not smack our children. And for many of us, we think that's a taken for granted. But actually, a colonial education system and uh, colonial structures that continue to reproduce today uh, re often remove that memory from our people and actually enforce other kinds of ways of being. So Te Taungo Taku Ngāko was really about speaking back to an idea, uh, to the dominant idea, that it was okay to hit your children. And from that work forward, it's been something we've been totally committed to in our lives, making change. And making change in a way that is about affirming, reclaiming, remembering, resurging, resisting 
any of the barriers to our capacity as whānau to make those changes. So this project came, has just come as another part of the life journey. And we wanted to, in particular, focus on that term matua rautia. Uh, that Fadi Hui Milroy used in the report for Te Kohanga Del Trust, but that is a whakatauki that our people have had in our lives for generations. So, what is the role of having many, not just parents, but many people who help to raise our children? What is the collective responsibility? And I pick up the Cordial around the collective responsibility that we're talking about when we talk about matua rautia, uh, for us as whānau is ours, right? That is ours. That is a whakaro Māori. However, there is a collective responsibility that the Crown has in its relationship through Te Tiriti o Waitangi to also be obligated to collective responsibility for the well-being of our tamariki and mokopuna. So it's always a multi-layered approach that we're talking about. It's always about the, sh the, the way that we want to reclaim and resurge and revitalise and be Māori or be hapu, be iwi, be whānau. And the other part of that is that there always needs to be some of us that are willing to be disruptors of the system. And not just disruptors of the system, be calling for its dismantling, be calling for its removal. Because at the moment, we know very clearly that it's not working for us. Um, so the, this project was through a, what they call a National Science Challenge. There are 10 National Science Challenges. They're very big um, in the research space. <coughs> But Māori engagement in those is very marginalised and often very limited. Uh, so this piece of work we got through a contestable fund that was really supported by Cure Kids, who were much more open to the kind of kaupapa Māori approach that we take in our mahi. And it was to... Is Renee here? Oh, OK. So it was to look at uh, the notion or the concept of te taungo takungako alongside the concept of matuarotia and how do we see traditional practices of child rearing for our people in that collective space. And so a big drive of that was actually a return to understanding what Fano is and a critique of this idea that Fano is family. And we've been doing this for a long time, right? This is not new. We've been saying whānau is not family. Family is a nuclear colonial domesticated model that is grounded in a colonial understanding of things like uh, Christian marriage, of things like nuclearised families living in singular nuclear houses, of things that affirm a colonial patriarchy. Family has its origins in that genealogy of colonialism. And yet we continue to hear people talking about family and whānau as if they're the same thing. So we've been doing that, I mean, we've had that going, that critique going for like, years, 30, 40 years, and yet we still see systems that operate in that manner. So one of the key focuses is to remind ourselves that Fano is, as Lihi has said to us all of the time, as wide, as deep, as high, as broad as we say it is. I will determine who my whanaunga are. I will say who my whānau are, my whānau will say who my whānau are. And so some of the things that have been coming up in this mahi around kōrero with whānau is that within whānau there are all, there's always somebody that has 
the knowledge of Fano, the knowledge of the relationships, the knowledge of Whakapapa, to be able to say where safe spaces are for our tamariki that need those safe spaces, that can determine that. So we've talked with Kuya and Kiroua that have placed seven mokopuna, eight mokopuna themselves within their own whānau when they've needed to do that because they know their own whānau, they can determine their own whānau. And in any change that might be happening in any system, that is a critical one, that whānau determine who whānau are, that whānau determine who their whakapapa relations are, that whānau determine how we do these things. And that was the basis of what is now the family group conference, right? If we go back to what that was about, that was about Māori, whānau, marae, taking control of the well-being of our own people in our own way and doing what was required collectively to do that well-being. So that's really the essence of what this kaupapa is about. And I'm, not, I'm just going to skip through. So we have a lot of people talking about what te taonga o takungaka is. And we'll put this, we'll send this out, okay? This slide's out for you. You don't need to write any of this down. Um, but these are some of the really key things that have come up from the very beginning of uh, working with the various whānau and being uh, in the wānanga that we've been really fortunate to be a part of, um, that are all part of our own whānau as well. And these are not new. We're just giving you fellas an evidence base, as someone said. We're providing an evidence base of the things we actually already know in our mahi. Tikanga, te reo, mātauranga is critical for tamariki and whānau order. That's very clear. That whānau is not the problem. Whānau is the solution. And I think we need to keep saying that all the time. Whānau is the solution. Whānau is not the problem. Because that's really deeply uh, embedded in the notion of whanaungatanga, when we speak of kaitiakitanga, when we speak of manakitanga, when we speak of manatangata, when we speak of mana atua, mana whenua, mana moana. It's all there. Whānau is actually the solution. That whānau is defined by us not by agencies, any agencies, not by the Crown, not by the state, not by the other systems that have been imported from elsewhere. Whānau is defined by us. And that we know within that, Matua Rautia tells us we have collective responsibility, we also have accountability, and we have obligations to each other. And we know that within our own whanaungatanga relationships because all of our tikanga tells us that. Our tuakana teina, mata mua pōtiki. You know, we know if we have pōtiki, we know the pōtikiitis that they have, <laughs> that they come with. You know, if they do a Māori tell us the characteristics of a pōtiki, we're going to get all the same words. Māori is the epitome of portikiitis in te ao Māori. And they come to us for a reason, for a learning and a teaching. And so within all of our kōrero around each other and our relationships within Fano, and critical to Fano defined, being defined by us is we know who is tuakana and teina. We know who is mātāmua and pōtiki. We know the relationships. We know the Tungangi and the Tuahine relationships. We know those in our, in our world. And we also know that we have many nannies. And that we have many karaua. We have many koro. And that they stretch out beyond us all of the time. That connectedness. Connectedness has been something that has come up continually. And that again was about whanaungatanga, whakapapa, whānau, 
monarchy, all of those things. And the term monarchy in itself tells us that, right? Kia akiaki te mana o te tangata. You know, it's a supporting way of being and how we understand our own relationship in terms of whānau. Communication and collective problem solving. One of the things I think that is something for us all to think about is the ways in which we re-embed within our own whānau, our own ability to heal ourselves. Our own ability to resolve issues before they escalate. And that moves, means moving beyond colonial ideas of family. Because colonial ideas of family in a nuclear family house tells us, I'm the king of my castle, this is my private space, you don't get to tell me what to do in my house. That's what domestication does in family. So we are thinking about models that actually also challenge even the way that we live our lives when we live in nuclear family contexts. We live in nuclear family contexts and we talk about whānau. So how do we live that outside of the four walls of the kinds of houses that have been built for our people? How do we have the intergenerational relationships that enable the flow of mātauranga through whānau, that enable the flow of te reo Māori within whānau? How do we do those things? How do we make those changes in our own lives? The intergenerational pā harakeke. And te pā harakeke is uh, a whakāro that we've had mai rānō in terms of whānau. People talk about it as a metaphor for whānau. It is not a metaphor for whānau. Te pā harakeke is a practice, is a whakāro, is a way of being. It's just different to a metaphor that describes something. Within Te Pā Harakeke, we have a whole lot of practice. And for those of you who are kairaranga, you know, you can speak to that practice in terms of how we nurture each other. And we have multitudes of uh, whakatauki that share with us the relationship within Te Pā Harakeke. That is multi-layered that it is always interconnected. Harakeke is interconnected, that's how they all grow, the various parts of the harakeke grow, through their interconnection. And so it brings us back to that fundamental of connectedness. The connectedness we have as tangata to each other, the connectedness we have as tangata to atua, the connectedness we have as tangata to whenua, to awa, to reo, to tikanga, all of those things. It's not only about our connectedness to ourselves. We need to be very careful about not being too tangata-centric <laughs> only in our whakaro, you know, because then we lose our relationship to our own whenua and we lose our relationship to all of the things in the taiao that offer us and that we have a role to be kaitiaki of and with uh, and the various whakatauki that people said in the corridor as we went round, you know, give us those indicators. So when we're talking about interconnectedness, and we're talking about pāharakeke, we're talking about our interconnectedness to everything. To everything, a taonga tukuiho mai nā tūpuna. Issues of government and agencies' failure to support Fano, there is just a constant flow of messages. A constant flow of messages and stories around that. And we're talking about agencies generally education, health, justice, corrections, um, SIFs. I don't use the term Oranga Tamariki because until some change happens, and it earns the name, it will remain SIFS for me and for my whānau. So there is a challenge there for significant change to be embedded. But I think we also need to remember that if we're trying to change a system from inside, 
that that should never be the only system available to our people. And we should be considering whether it should exist at all. And I'm talking about all the systems. When we established Kura Kaipapa Māori, when Kohanga there was established, Kura Kaipapa Māori was established, of which people in this room were a part of, of establishing that, our people were, you know, moved with their feet. Farikura came, Wānanga came. Yeah. Sometimes we have to remove from systems in order to build the new ones. And they may not even be a system. It might be in the essence of rebuilding whānau. And acknowledging the impacts of systemic racism. And we don't want to spend a lot of time on these kaupapa, on those particular issues, because they take a lot of our time and energy all the time. Which is why we've you know, been really conscious about having Uriore and having Matuatine and having Linda talk about Pūrāko and, and telling stories to our children. Uh, but in this opening part, Vicky and I really do want to lay some contextual issues on the, on the table in terms of the system issues and the policy issues. And then we want to move to what we want to do. But a part of Kaupapa Māori in terms of notions of rangatiratanga, mana motuhakitanga, is actually challenging the failure of the Crown to be honourable with our people. So that's, I'm going to leave it there because we started a little bit late. And I want to hand over to Vicky to do her kōrero. Uh, and we can have some pātai at the end. Kaitipai? <laughs>